started. Uh, we'll call the order the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Board of Directors regular meeting Thursday, August 13th, 2015 at 18.03 hours. Uh, Director Wisniewski, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the
uh, some of the other things that uh, we're going to make available as uh, free items for people who might want them. Um, we did, you know, the, uh, the uh, original contract or bidder for the asbestos ended up being a little bit on that, so they're the ones that uh, got the contract. Uh, and we have been working with uh, Himmelman, and Const uh, Himmelman Construction on the uh, general contract, which was on the agenda. However, um, they delivered a first draft at about 6 p.m. yesterday, and uh, unfortunately, uh, it's still over at uh, our legal counsel's uh, being reviewed. I think there's a dolphin on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they, uh, Adele Reister has not returned the uh, the contract back to us. Uh, basically, it was much. It was just too short a timeline to expect to get that done in 24 hours. Uh, so we are going to have to uh, postpone that. Uh, we do know what the contract amount is. Uh, you know, with the 464,000 after the changes uh, that were made in the scope, and uh, that won't uh, change in the terms of the contract. The only language that uh, you know the our legal counsel needed to put in was the legal language uh, that's required by law to allow us to enter into that, which is that it's subject to authorization of funds, uh, that the contractor won't hire illegal aliens and a couple of other provisions that state law requires. Uh, so we should see that back from, uh, from the legal counsel on Monday, and we will have to schedule a uh, special meeting to approve that uh, contract uh, sometime next week. Uh, we do have the two positions uh, that are currently open that are closing tomorrow. Uh, we had hoped to start interviews on the administrative position uh, before they closed. Unfortunately, with Marie uh, going out uh, this week, um, that kind of put a, a monkey wrench into those plans. So we're probably going to uh, be in, in contact with all of the applicants uh, tomorrow and let them know that uh, it's going to be a little bit delayed while we, uh, while we regroup. I think we'll probably have to end up uh, pushing those off until after I return from vacation, given uh, the other things that are going on in the next, I basically have three more days to, before I'm leaving, and it's going to be too tight of a schedule to try to accomplish much for that. How many applicants do we have? Um, we had uh, nine applicants that uh, met all of our qualifications, and four that uh, really didn't. And actually, today we received another three, I believe. Um, and uh, looking at it, I think one or two of those are probably meeting our qualifications. Um, it's been surprising to me with all of these jobs how many people apply who obviously don't read what we're asking for. You know, I'm a security guard at a <laughs> car dealership. I can apply for your job. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we had one person apply for the paramedic job who works in a tire factory. Uh, you know, oh. Yeah. So you, you got to give it to them for uh, uh, you know initiative, but uh, we are going to have to sort it out and uh, sort some of those out. We do have 12 candidates for the paramedic position, which is twice what we had last time. That's great. Uh, so I, I would still rather see more, but uh, it's better than we did, uh, and I'd say that. A couple of those uh, stand out so far, and we're going to be doing uh, telephone interviews with uh, uh, all of them that uh, you know meet, meet all our qualifications next week, and then scheduling uh, uh, you know a, a um, interview session again sometime in the next uh, couple of weeks. Once Marie's retirement. She's uh, flexible on that. Uh, she uh, wanted to get someone on before we started budget for the year uh, so that we could get that person through that part of uh, kind of the, the training on it. Uh, and uh, then she wants to be finished sometime before the end of the year. So we'll have some overlap period. Um, but uh, we really, I'd really like to see us uh, get that position started in September which even at that is probably going to be a little bit tight. Uh, 
just because we got pushed back uh, several weeks on our on our schedule on that. Um, let's see, uh, a couple of other things. The rookies uh, did their uh, uh, car wash fundraiser last week and raised almost five thousand dollars. Uh, That's which awesome. Was awesome. Fantastic. Almost five thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. And that, uh, that money uh, is going to go to uh, Sergeant Renfro's family. Uh, they made that decision oh, back in the winter. Uh, so um, they'll be getting them a check in the next week or so. That's um, that is, that was, uh, that was uh, they made more this year than they had in the past two years combined. So that was, uh, that was an excellent uh, fundraiser, well done by the rookies. We've got uh, the Fire Adapted Communities uh, group had their first meeting. Um, we got a little bit uh, started on that and got some ideas on direction, but uh, uh, we're going to be moving moving ahead uh, with time, you know, with uh, that program as we move into the fall. Uh, we did get uh, the next um, the next level of notification on that grant. Uh, you know, so we still haven't gotten a letter of award on it, but. Uh, because uh, you know, basically, once you get the notification to complete the paperwork for for that, uh, pretty much uh, that grant is is going to go through at this point. Um, you know, uh, so we will have uh, that to your position to help with the fire adapted communities program uh, to do risk analysis and public education for uh, wildfire mitigation and prevention. Uh, and then the final thing that's going on with public relations, we did meet with uh, representatives of the Archdiocese of uh, Denver. Uh, the Catholic Church is proposing to build a retreat center out uh, in the Schaefer's Crossing area, and uh, we met with them to uh, discuss, uh, you know, the provisions that uh, we would see with uh, we would need to see to uh, allow development of that. Uh, they're looking at a facility that could potentially have uh, 300 people at it, uh, so it would be a fairly significant impact on us. Uh, that is still not approved yet by the county. Uh, they have a public hearing scheduled for that uh, on the 20th, uh, so we'll see where that goes with, uh, with public input on that, and that obviously is a pretty critical step before the county will approve their zoning. And then it'll be after the if the county does approve it, then they'll uh, be coming back to us for particulars on how how that whole facility is going to have to be designed and implemented. It was actually written up in the paper or the issue that came out uh, yesterday. <coughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, and then obviously we had some pretty pretty significant concerns because of the location. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, you know, Schaefer's Crossing is not an ideal location for adding a lot of traffic, uh, and um, obviously that uh, Elk Creek drainage area is one that's uh, particularly sensitive to wildfire because of the potential funneling of fires that uh, could occur from anywhere on the north pipe through that area. So uh, we're going to have to look at uh, how they would be able to mitigate uh, the danger of uh, a wildfire moving moving through that uh, that property. Okay, um, on grants, you know, uh, we actually uh, with this uh, latest grant, uh, that'll make uh, four out of six grants that we've applied for in the last year. That'll be the fourth one that's approved, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Really. And uh, so we are uh, we are getting the equipment from the. Uh, Colorado Firefighter Safety Grant uh, that's been uh, starting to come in now, and uh, we should see the uh, SCBA compressor, the breathing air compressor, uh, within the next month also. Um, then we've got two other grant applications outstanding. I think that uh, both of those are probably less likely than the ones that we have uh, received. But, uh, I, I still think that four out of six is a, is a pretty strong showing for for the district. Uh, let's see, um, one, one other thing, um, actually two other things. So one, uh, the cistern that we have out in uh, Pine Junction, we did get that filled in finally. Uh, we elected not to replace that, and so that's uh, 
that's been resolved. Uh, and then the other thing that came up is that uh, we found out that um, our uh, former fleet mechanic had failed to file the paperwork for inspecting our fuel tank on a regular basis. Uh, so we got a notification from the state that we were fined $250 for uh, failing to submit the documentation. Um, we did work out with them a compliance agreement, basically. So all we've got to do is look at that once a month and check the box on the form and send it back to them, which was all that was really required in the past. So it's unfortunate that uh, it wasn't done, but uh, um, we will have to pay that $250 fine, and uh, they're happy that uh, you know we are we do have a plan moving forward. Anything else? That's all. Any questions for the chief? No, thank you. Thank you. Did Michelle send that bill to the debris? <laughs> sure. Uh, unfortunately, I think we're stuck with it. Uh, it's not a huge bill, so it's more of the. No, I know, but still. Right. It's more of the point. Exactly. Understood. Problem eliminated. Okay. Uh, Chief Ware's on deployment. Do um, you have anything to pass on for him? Or just... No. Um, Where is he? They are in uh, Northern California um, on the Mad River complex. Uh, apparently, they've been working night shift, which is always the worst deal on the fire because they're trying to sleep in 100 degree weather every day. So uh, it's a rough, it's a rough gig for those guys. Sometimes that's what you get. Yeah. Luck of a draw. Yeah. Okay. Uh, new business 2015 budget amendment discussion. Okay. So, um, you know, and in looking at this, what we are going to need um, in order to do a budget amendment next month, which I'm going to recommend that the board does because uh, the construction project is uh, going to be um, $300,000 more than we originally put in the budget. Um, so, what we will need to do to uh, uh, amend that budget is we'll need a motion from the board uh, to call a public hearing at the next meeting or at any meeting subsequent to that uh, to uh, uh, do that budget amendment and then we'll have to also advertise that. Um, at this point, I think that the only uh, significant thing that we'll have on the budget amendment is the uh, change in the amount of uh, capital project. Um, uh, that's really everything else is more or less in line. There are a few things that uh, we're running uh, high on and some things that we're running low on, but combined with those don't really impact uh, uh, the overall budget. We should stay relatively at or below uh, the rest of the budget with the exception of the capital projects. So two questions. Number one, how do we advertise that? And then secondly, um, can you just call out for the record what what basically caused us to have this overage? Well, the uh, yes, the, in order to do that, we just have to advertise in the in the papers. Okay. Uh, and uh, that that's not a problem with, with 30 days notice. Um, and then, as far as the uh, cost overages, uh, you know, it uh, primarily came about because uh, you know as we started into this project. Uh, you know, first off, the uh, mechanical system started failing at, uh, you know, after we had set the budget for the project, uh, which caused us to look at expanding the amount of mechanical work that we're going to be doing. And then, uh, and then another big factor in that was the, you know, testing and discovery of asbestos and lead in the, uh, in the living area up there that has to be removed. Thank you. Do we need a motion for that tonight? Um, yes, we, we could have a motion, although you don't have to do it at the next meeting. You could do it at any meeting uh, you know, between here and the end of the, of the year. So uh, if you would rather defer it, you can, or you can set that hearing uh, for next month. Uh, that would be the choice of the board. I'll make the motion. Okay. <laughs> So basically all the motion needs to read is to schedule and announce a public hearing to amend the budget? That's correct. Sound good to you? Yes. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Anything else on that? That is all on that. Yeah. Any other questions on budget? Uh, do you want
want to discuss the uh, construction contract? I feel like we I think we probably covered that. I uh, did send that draft around. Uh, so you saw it's basically uh, $464,000 stipulated sum contract. Again, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at the particulars on that. Uh, when you say uh, a stipulated sum, is that, is that like the maximum you would pay out? Well, you know, we had started to, you know, the Himmelman had brought up the idea of doing a, a maximum. Uh, construction management with a maximum bid. However, when we, you know, they spent uh, two weeks trying to get lower prices on uh, on their uh, subcontractors, and they came back to us and said that basically it would end up being this that amount. Uh, they weren't getting uh, any additional bids. Uh, so, I mean, that is that a fixed price? That the is entire the entire job. That is a, exactly their profit. Right, that's a that's a fixed price for the for the entire project. Yeah. Now that isn't to say that you know we couldn't end up with change orders in the process. That's the only other thing is right. And how to make sure we don't do unnecessary change orders. In the right. Process. And I think that uh, I think the plans are pretty straightforward. I don't see really much in the way of potential change orders. Yet. Can't speak for the department, but it's pretty. Yeah, so, so the, 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 the way the contract is written, do, do, the, do the plans and specifications get attached to the contract? That's correct. So the plans with the amendments that were made, um, you know, in our pre-construction meeting, we did agree to make some changes that brought that price down, and those are those are listed out in the, in the um, uh, contract, and they'll be listed in the, uh, in the revised plan. That are provided. So from that point forward, the plans and specifications will be what uh, what we're expecting them to build. Um, and that's another reason I think that we're unlikely to have much in the change, way of change orders is that we've already sat down and looked at what potential things uh, we would uh, they would recommend doing differently. And um, you know, short of them starting to dig into the upstairs and find out that. Some things about to fall apart, or you know, there's some other major thing that we couldn't see uh, ahead of time. You know, there, there, that's there's not likely to be much change. And as a, it's a, not a uh, overly complex project, uh, I don't see that there's a lot of likelihood for that occurring. Okay. Any other questions on that? No. Okay, any old business from the board? Citizens' issues. Okay. Um, motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourned at eighteen twenty-seven. <coughs> I thought these meetings are going to get even shorter.